Caesar the Circle Eight talking to you about radiance. Now start taking these notes before you see me get mad. And you don't want to see me get mad. <laughs> First vocabulary term is a central angle. That would be an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So let's take a look at what that looks like. In our example down here, we have circle G. And within circle G, we have a central angle. This angle right here, angle D, G, E. We know it's a central angle because it's an angle whose vertex, point G in this case, would be the center of the circle. Next, let's talk about an intercepted arc. That would be an arc of a circle having endpoints on the sides of a central angle and its other points in the interior of the angle. So again, let's check out our example to see what this looks like. We once again have circle G, but within circle G, this time we're focused on this green arc out here, arc DE. Arc DE would be considered an intercepted arc of this circle because it has endpoints, point D and point E, that lie on the sides of a central angle, angle D, G, E. And all the other points within the arc lie in the interior of that central angle. Therefore, arc DE would be considered an intercepted arc. Next vocabulary term is a radiant. That would be the measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc with length equal to the radius of the circle. So let's look at our example to figure out what this means. This is saying that the measure of a central angle is going to be equal to one radian if the length of the intercepted arc is equal to the length of the radius of the circle. So in this case, the measure of central angle DGE would equal one radian if the length of this intercepted arc right here, arc DE, was equal to the length of the radius radius, the measure of segment GE. Now, the cool thing about radians is that like degrees, we can use them to measure the amount of rotation from the initial side of an angle to the terminal side of an angle. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to measure specific angles within the unit circle in terms of radians. We're also going to figure out how to convert between degrees and radians. Now, this is the unit circle that we filled out in the previous lessons. We have all of the degree measures and all of the corresponding points for those specific degree measures around the unit circle. Now, what we need to do is we need to label these angle measures in terms of radians as well. So just like we started with degrees, we're going to start with zero radians on the positive x axis. Now, in the unit circle, we have a radius of one unit, meaning that if we were to calculate one full revolution around the unit circle, we would use the circumference formula 2 pi r, and we would plug in one for the radius, meaning one full revolution all the way around in terms of radians would be 2 times pi times 1, or 2 pi. So if the initial side of our angle is on the positive x-axis and we swing our terminal side all the way around one revolution, that would be two pi radians. Now I'm showing you what one full revolution in terms of radians is because what we can actually do now is break it up based on this knowledge. So if we know that one full revolution is two pi radians, then we know half of a revolution would be pi radians. And then we know half of that would be pi over two radians. So then if we know that a 90 degree rotation is pi over two radians, then another 90 degree rotation would be another pi over 2 radians. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or pi. So if we add pi over 2 to this, we should get 3 pi over 2, and we should end up right at 270 degrees. Then if we add another pi over 2 to this, we should end up with 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi, and right back to where we started, one full revolution. Cool. Let's continue with this theme of breaking up what we know already. So if we know that a 90 degree rotation is the same as pi over 2 radians, then what would be half of that? What would be a 45 degree rotation? Well, that would be half of pi over 2, which is pi over 4. So if a 45 degree rotation is pi over 4 radians, then all we're going to have to do is just count by pi over 4s to get us all of the 45 degree multiples. So we have 1 pi over 4 at 45 degrees, 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2 at 90 degrees, 3 pi over 4 at 135 degrees, 4 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi at 180 degrees, 5 pi over 4 at 225 degrees, 6 pi over 4, which simplifies to 3 pi over 2 at 270 degrees, 7 pi over 4 at 315 degrees, and 8 pi over 4 which simplifies to 2 pi at 360 degrees. Cool. Now we just need the radian measures that correspond with the multiples of 30 degrees to get us all the rest of these angle measures in terms of radians. So let's start with 30 degrees. What is 30 degrees in terms of radians? Well, that's going to be pi over 6. And we know that because one full revolution, like we said, is 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. And on that interval from 0 to 2 pi, or 0 to 360 degrees, there are 12 different angles that have measures that are multiples of 30 
30 degrees. Meaning, in order to figure out the radian measure for one 30 degree angle, all I have to do is just take 2 pi, divide it by 12, and I get pi over 6. That would represent one 30 degree angle rotation in radians. So if we know that a 30 degree rotation in terms of radians is pi over 6, we can actually just count by pi over 6s to get us all the rest of the multiples of 30 degrees around the unit circle. So we start. 1 pi over 6 corresponds with 30 degrees. 2 pi over 6, which simplifies to pi over 3, that corresponds with 60 degrees. 3 pi over 6, which simplifies to pi over 2, that corresponds with 90 degrees. 4 pi over 6, which simplifies to 2 pi over 3, that corresponds with 120 degrees. 5 pi over 6 corresponds with 150 degrees. 6 pi over 6, which simplifies to pi, that corresponds corresponds with 180 degrees, 7 pi over 6 corresponds with 210 degrees, 8 pi over 6, which simplifies to 4 pi over 3, that corresponds with 240 degrees, 9 pi over 6 simplifies to 3 pi over 2, that corresponds with 207 degrees, 10 pi over 6, which simplifies to 5 pi over 3, that corresponds with 300 degrees, 11 pi over 6 corresponds with 330 degrees, and then 12 pi over 6 simplifies to 2 pi, that corresponds with 360 degrees. So now we have completely filled out our unit circle. We have all of the angle measures in terms of degrees and radians, and we have the x and y coordinates of each point along the unit circle. We can now use this to answer a variety of questions, and it's broadly applicable and will come in handy later on. Now let's talk about converting between degrees and radians. So sometimes you won't be able to use radians or you won't be able to use degrees and you need to convert between them. What you're going to do if you want to convert from degrees to radians, you take your angle measure in degrees and you multiply it by pi over 180. And that should give you the measure of the angle in terms of radians. If you want to convert your angle measure from radians to degrees, all you have to do is just multiply the measure of that angle in terms of radians by 180 over pi and simplify. And that will give you the measure of your angle in terms of degrees. You know what my favorite kind of tree is? A geometry! Oh, example time! Now, example one says so find the degree measure of an angle with the given radians. So here we're going to start with negative 3 pi over 4. And we said to convert from radians to degrees, we just have to multiply our angle measure in terms of radians by 180 over pi. Then all you have to do is just multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, and then simplify your fraction. So the pi's cancel out, and then 4 goes into 540 135 times. So we end up getting that negative 3 pi over 4 is equivalent to negative 135 degrees. For B, we want to convert pi over 6 radians to degrees. So we said anytime you want to convert the measure of your angle from radians to degrees, you just have to multiply your radian measure by 180 over pi. So when multiplying fractions, you just multiply the numerators together and denominators together and then simplify. The pi's end up canceling each other out. 180 divided by 6 gives you 30 degrees, meaning pi over 6 radians is equivalent to 30 degrees. Part C, we want to convert 5 pi over 3 radians to degrees. So to go from radians to degrees, we just have to multiply our radian measure by 180 over pi. Then we multiply the numerators together, the denominators together, and simplify our fraction. So the pi's cancel each other out. 900 divided by 3 is just going to give you 300. Therefore, we know 5 pi over 3 radians is equivalent to 300 degrees. Part D, we have negative 3 pi over 2 radians, and we want to convert that to degrees. So to do that, all we have to do is just multiply our radian measure by 180 over pi. We multiply the numerators together and denominators together, and we simplify. The pi's end up canceling each other out, and 540 divided by 2 gives you 270. Therefore, negative 3 pi over 2 radians is equivalent to negative 270 degrees. Ooh, ah, you try! Okay, doing the same thing here. We want to convert our radian measure to degrees. In order to do that, we just multiply our radian measure by 180 over pi. Now we multiply the numerators together and the denominators together and we simplify. Pi's cancel each other out and then 180 divided by 2 is going to give you 90. Therefore, we know that negative pi over 2 radians is equivalent to negative 90 degrees. Next, we're going to convert 7 pi over 6 to degrees. In order to do that, we just have to multiply it by 180 over pi. We're going to multiply the numerators together and denominators together and simplify. Pi's cancel each other out. 1260 divided by 6 is going to give you 210. Therefore, we know that 7 pi over 6 radians is equivalent to 210 degrees. Part C, we want to convert 11 pi over 4 radians to degrees. To do that, we just have to multiply it by 180 over pi. We multiply the numerators together and denominators together and simplify. The pi's cancel each other out, and 1980 divided by 4 is going to give you 495. Therefore, we know that 11 pi over 4 radians is equivalent to 495 degrees. Part D, doing the same thing, we want to convert negative 2 pi over 3 radians to degrees. To do that, we have to multiply it by 180 over pi. We multiply the numerators together and denominators together and simplify. Over here, the pi's cancel each other out, and 360 divided by 3 is going to give you 120. Therefore, we know that negative 2 pi over 3 radians is equivalent to negative 120 degrees. 
Now example two says find the radian measure of an angle with the given degrees. So we're going the other way this time. This time they give us the measure of an angle in terms of degrees, and we need to write that in terms of radians. So how do we convert degrees to radians? Well, instead of multiplying by 180 over pi, like we did last time, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that, which is pi over 180. Now, how do I multiply 150 and pi over 180? Well, just imagine that 150 is 150 over one, and then multiply the numerators together and denominators together, and you get 150 pi over 180. Now, all you have to do is just simplify this fraction. 150 over 180 actually simplifies down to 5 over 6. So you end up getting that 150 degrees is equivalent to 5 pi over 6 radians. Part B, doing the same thing. We want to convert negative 30 degrees into radians. To do that, we just have to multiply by pi over 180. Now, to multiply these two things together, just imagine that negative 30 is over 1, and we multiply the numerators together and denominators together. When you do, you get negative 30 pi over 180. We then simplify. 30 over 180 simplifies down to 1 over 6, meaning that negative 30 degrees is equivalent to negative pi over 6 radians. Part C, we want to do the same thing. We're converting 90 degrees to radians. To do that, we have to multiply it by pi over 180. Now, to multiply these two things together, just imagine that 90 is over 1 and multiply the numerators together and denominators together. Now, all you have to do is just simplify this fraction. 90 over 180 simplifies to 1 over 2, meaning that 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2 radians. Part D, doing the same thing. We have negative 180 degrees, and we want to convert that to radians. To do that, we have to multiply it by pi over 180. Now, to multiply these two things together, just imagine that negative 180 is over 1, and multiply the numerators together and denominators together. Now, all you have to do is just simplify this fraction, 180 over 180. Oh, those just cancel each other out, and we end up getting negative pi, meaning that negative 180 degrees is equivalent to negative pi radians. Bananas good! Humans bad! You try... Okay, doing the same thing. We have 120 degrees. We want to convert that to radians. To do that, we just have to multiply by pi over 180. Now, to multiply these two things together, just imagine that 120 is over 1 and multiply the numerators together and denominators together. And we end up getting 120 pi over 180. Now, 120 over 180 simplifies down to 2 over 3, meaning that 120 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi over 3 radians. Part B, we want to convert negative 210 degrees to radians. To do that, we have to multiply by pi over 180. To multiply these two things together, just imagine that 210 is over 1 and multiply the numerators together and denominators together. Now, all you have to do is just simplify 210 over 180 actually simplifies down to 7 over 6. Therefore, we know that negative 210 degrees is equivalent to negative 7 pi over 6 radians. Part C, we want to convert 315 degrees to radians. So how do we do that? We multiply it by pi over 180. Now to multiply these two things together, just imagine that 315 is over 1, and then you multiply the numerators together and denominators together. Now all you have to do is simplify. 315 over 180 actually simplifies down to 7 over 4. Therefore, 315 degrees we know is equivalent to 7 pi over 4 radians. Lastly, we want to convert negative 45 degrees to radians. So how do we do that? We multiply by pi over 180. Now to multiply these two things together, just imagine that negative 45 is over 1. Multiply the numerators together and denominators together and simplify. 45 over 180 actually simplifies down to 1 over 4. Therefore, we know that negative 45 degrees is equivalent to negative pi over 4 radians. Now let's quickly review the trig cheat codes. So we said last time, if you had an angle whose measure was a multiple of 30 degrees or 45 degrees, you could actually use the unit circle to help you evaluate the sine of that angle, the cosine of that angle, and the tangent of that angle. The sine of that angle was just equal to the y coordinate of the point that corresponded with that angle on the unit circle. The cosine of that angle was just equal to the x coordinate of that point that corresponded with the angle on the unit circle. And the tangent of that angle was equal to the y coordinate over the x coordinate of that point that corresponded with your angle on the unit circle. Now, last time, we only evaluated the sine, cosine, and tangent of angles with their measures given in degrees. But the cool thing is, today, we're going to see that it works the exact same way if the measures of your angles are given in radians. The sine of your angle is still equal to the y-coordinate of that point that corresponds with your angle on the unit circle. The cosine of your angle is still equal to the x-coordinate of that point that corresponds with your angle on the unit circle. The tangent of your angle is still equal to the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate of your point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle. So let's do some examples with that. So example three says find the exact value of the given trig function. So first we want to evaluate sine of pi. Remember, this time instead of giving us degree measures, they're giving us radian measures. But it works the exact same way. We need to locate pi radians on the unit circle. So where's pi radians on the unit circle? That's right here. Remember, pi radians corresponds with 180 degrees. Now remember, sine of an angle is going to be equal to the y coordinate of the point that corresponds with your angle on the unit circle. So this point right here, negative one comma zero, corresponds with pi radians. Meaning that sine of our given angle is going to be equal to the y coordinate or zero in this case and you're done 
For B, we want to evaluate cosine of pi over 4. So to evaluate this, we need to locate pi over 4 radians on the unit circle. So pi over 4 radians, that's right here. Remember, pi over 4 radians corresponds with 45 degrees. Now remember, cosine of an angle is equal to the x-coordinate of the point that corresponds with your angle on the unit circle. So the x-coordinate of the point that corresponds with pi over 4 radians is rad 2 over 2. Therefore, cosine of pi over 4 is equal to rad 2 over 2. And you're done. Part C, we want to evaluate sine of negative pi over 6. So we need to locate negative pi over 6 radians on the unit circle. Oh, there are no negative radian measures on the unit circle. So what do we do? Well, remember, if you want to create an angle on the unit circle, you put your initial side on the positive x-axis. And if you rotate your terminal side counterclockwise, you're going to get positive angle measures. But if you rotate that terminal side clockwise, you're going to get negative angle measures. So instead of going from our initial side and rotating counterclockwise pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees, we're going to go from our initial side and rotate clockwise negative pi over 6 radians or negative 30 degrees and we end up at 11 pi over 6 meaning that those are co-terminal angles meaning that negative pi over 6 radians is equivalent to 11 pi over 6 radians meaning that sine of negative pi over 6 is equivalent to sine of 11 pi over 6. Now we just said sine of an angle is equal to the y coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle so sine of 11 pi over 6 is going to be equal to the y coordinate of this point right here which would be negative one half and you're done for d this time we want to evaluate tangent of two pi over three so first thing we have to do is locate two pi over three radians on the unit circle there it is it's equivalent to 120 degrees so remember tangent of an angle is equal to the y coordinate of the point over the x coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle in the unit circle so in this case since our point is negative one half comma rad three over two the tangent of two pi over three is going to be equal to the y coordinate over the x coordinate or rad three over two over negative one half now, when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So all we have to do now is just multiply the numerators together and denominators together. Or you can just see that these twos are going to cancel each other out and we end up getting negative rad three. That's what tangent of two pi over three is equal to. Time for you to try or I'll be a monkey so cool. <laughs> Okay, doing the same thing. First, we want to evaluate cosine of pi. So first thing we have to do is locate pi radians on the unit circle. Where is that? That's right there. It's equivalent to 180 degrees. So cosine of an angle is equal to the x coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle. So as you can see, negative 1 comma 0 corresponds with pi radians on the unit circle. Therefore, the cosine of pi is going to be equal to the x coordinate here, which is negative 1. To evaluate sine of 7 pi over 6, we have to locate 7 pi over 6 radians on the unit circle. There it is. It's equivalent to 210 degrees. Now, sine of an angle is equal to the y-coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle. So if the point that corresponds with 7 pi over 6 radians is negative rad 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half, sine of 7 pi over 6 is going to be equal to the y-coordinate of this point right here, which would be negative 1 half. Part C, we want to evaluate cosine of negative 7 pi over 6. So as we said before, we have to locate negative 7 pi over 6 radians on the unit circle. And there are no negative angle measures on the unit circle. So how do we find negative 7 pi over 6 radians? Well, we're going to start with our initial side of our angle on the positive x-axis. And instead of rotating our terminal side counterclockwise like we do with positive angle measures, we're going to rotate our terminal side clockwise like we do with negative angle measures. And since it's negative 7 pi over 6, we just need to count by pi over 6s, which... Remember, pi over 6 is equivalent to 30 degrees. So this would be negative 1 pi over 6. This would be negative 2 pi over 6. This would be negative 3 pi over 6. This would be negative 4 pi over 6. This would be negative 5 pi over 6. This would be negative 6 pi over 6. This would be negative 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 radians is equivalent to positive 5 pi over 6 radians. Those are coterminal angles. Now all we have to do is evaluate cosine of 5 pi over 6. And we said cosine of an angle is just equal to the x coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle so in this case that would be negative rad 3 over 2 and you're done lastly we want to evaluate tangent of pi over 2 so we locate pi over 2 radians on the unit circle and tangent of an angle is equal to the y coordinate over the x coordinate of the point that corresponds with that angle on the unit circle so in this case that would be 1 over 0 and anytime your denominator is equal to 0 your answer should be undefined and you're done